In this video, we'll go through an example of calculating the transmission coefficient for a particle of mass m and energy E, which encounters a finite barrier of height V naught, which we're assuming to be much, much larger than E, and of width 2A. Uh, we can also compare our WKB estimate with the exact result uh, for this problem adapted to the appropriate regime. So the WKB regime that we're looking at, which means in the case where the transmission uh, probability is very, very small because we're considering a very large and a very high and a very long potential barrier. So the potential that we're looking at over here is one that has height V naught. between uh, when x is between zero and two a and it's zero otherwise. Uh, in the last video, we saw that the uh, transmission coefficient according to the WKB approximation was equal to e to the minus two uh, times integral of kappa x dx over the length of the barrier, which for now I've written as in general as x naught to x. In this particular problem, our limits of integration are from zero to two a, because that's the length of our potential barrier. Uh, this kappa is given by two, the square root of two m times energy, uh, I'm sorry, the potential V naught minus the energy of the particle over H bar. So when we calculate the integral Uh, everything here is a constant. So the, the integral is, is trivial. Uh, the constant comes out and we're only left with uh, 2a minus zero, which just gives us a factor of 2a. This means that our uh, Transmission coefficient in our WKB approximation goes something like e to the minus four h bar two m v naught over e. Okay. And uh, as, as a shorthand, we'll uh, call gamma as um, 2a h bar 2m v naught e. The exact result for this problem for the transmission coefficient is given by the following expression. Uh, we have a cinch of gamma cinch squared over one. And here, this gamma is the same one as this gamma that we have over here. And we would like to show that this result coincides with our WKB approximation in the limit where uh, the transmission coefficient is very small. So in the limit where V naught is very large and A is also very large. Okay, in other words, when uh, this is much, much smaller than one.
So if the transmission is very small, this means that this gamma that we had defined, this has to be much, much greater than one, or in other words, it has to be very, very large. In that case, uh, cinch of gamma is normally e to the gamma minus e to the minus gamma. When gamma is very large, this term is essentially zero. So this is very close to being uh, one half e to the gamma. In that case, we can rewrite our transmission coefficient v not squared like this. So this term over here used to be a sinh squared. We've replaced sinh uh, by e to the gamma over two. So when you square it, you pick up a two over here and the one half becomes a one quarter. We're going to factor this term out of the denominator. E to the gamma, so that we're left with one plus uh, 16 e to the gamma all over one. Okay, since we're taking gamma to be very, very large, this would make this term very, very small, which means that one plus this term will be approximately equal to one. And if we uh, transform this so that the exponent is now in the numerator and we bring this over there, We get that in the appropriate WKB limit, uh, the transmission coefficient from the exact result transforms into this. What we have found using the WKB method was that the transmission coefficient was equal to E to the minus two gamma. Our exact result under this approximation gives us this. So we get, we get the exponential term to match and the coefficient outside of it is fairly close. Uh, you can see that when V naught is very large, uh, this will vary as one over V naught in general. Uh, so this is a, a little bit off from our exact result, but the more the qualitative behavior, the fact that it's decaying exponentially with this coefficient uh, matches our WKB approximation. So the exact transmission coefficient is approximately equal to the WKB transmission coefficient. Okay, so in this simple system, we see that our WKB method continues to work fairly well. And this brings us uh, in the next video then to look at how we can use the WKB method to estimate lifetimes in these types of processes that can be modeled by a particle on one side of, the, of a potential barrier being able to tunnel through. And we would like to estimate uh, how much time the particle spends in the left-hand region of the potential barrier. 
and we'll look at that in the next video.